All right, hello there. As you can see, my book is getting a little bit worn from dragging it around with me everywhere I go. I need to finish this book so I can put it back on the shelf before it gets tore up. We are reading The Journey to Heaven by uh, St. Tikhon of Zadonsk. We're in part three, chapter 10, Away with Drunkenness. Now, for the sake of brevity, I've not, you know, uh, copied all the uh, actual Bible verses uh, written out, so I'm not going to read them, but I will list them. So 1 Corinthians 6.10 is the first scripture he talks about, and the second one is Luke 21.34. And then he says, quote, it makes a man a beast to be a drunkard. Quote, the devil loves nothing like luxury and drunkenness, end quote. St. John Chrysostom, homily 58 on St. Matthew. Drunkenness causes, one, weakened body and sickness. Sirach 31, 25. Two, it causes wretchedness and poverty. Sirach 19, 1. Three, it removes glory and honor and causes contempt and loathing. Four, it brings grief and sorrow to the home. Five, it makes the drinker useless. To guard against it, one, deny alcohol to youth to avoid a habit forming because uh, young people tend to form habits pretty quickly and easily. Two, keep youth away from heavy drinkers and people who cause problems. Three, drink in moderation for a purpose when you do drink as an adult. Four, avoid bad company and parties. Five, it's extremely difficult to resist, so avoid it uh, because it leads to other sins and can kill body and soul. Six, if addicted, arm yourself powerfully against it and its torments and make a stand and pray with all your heart to God for help and don't stop or give up. On that note, in another book um, called The uh, the Way of the Pilgrim, and the Pilgrim Continues His Way, it's a it's a diary of a, an anonymous uh, pilgrim that is an Orthodox Christian uh, walking through Russia in the 1700s. And he has uh, some experience with alcoholics. And uh, one of the people he meets on his journey is an army officer who was an alcoholic and was doing really well, but his drinking habit made him lose his position in the military and he got demoted uh, but he ran into a monk who was going through the barracks trying to pass out religious materials and the monk told him that every time because he asked uh, every time uh, he had the urge to drink to read a, a chapter of the bible one of the gospels and uh, so that's what he did and uh, sure enough gradually over time by doing that, um, every time he got the urge to drink, he would read the Bible and the urge would go away until he couldn't, uh, he didn't have time or wasn't able to get to uh, a drink. So he would go to sleep and, and, it, and it cured him. So then he made a habit of just reading the, uh, a chapter or excuse me, a book of the Gospels every day. All right, so that was number six. Number seven, compare a drunk life to a sober life and the suffering caused by drinking and that, and that consider that drunks often die in their sleep without consciousness or repentance. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy. All right, so that's chapter 10, very briefly summarized. Uh, again, I'm not doing the book any credit because I, I cut it so short, but I want you to buy the book and I don't want to get in trouble for copyright infringements. Um, it's a really good read, and it's basic Christianity uh, from a saint from the 1700s. And uh, I'm doing this more for my grandchildren than anything, because I don't get to see them very much, but it's your own public as well. And uh, I hope people with a lot better skills than I have at doing this sort of thing start doing similar things. I'm starting to see some of that. But regardless of whether my stuff is polished or not, and if I ever get time in retirement to, to learn how to do stuff to make this more 
polished I will but for now uh, something's better than nothing so please pray for me a sinner God bless over and out